pace. <clears throat> but <clears throat> I can't say he really took – he probably didn't have the grades to go any further. But I would have took uh, Jamil over Rashawn Reese too. And Justin over Rashawn Reeves. I mean, Justin Martin is uh, definitely one of my favorites, man. He, I mean, you're talking about guards that should control a game, you know. No, that's what I mean, because cause Phoenix, Phoenix was tough. But, like, if you're talking about, I don't, I didn't really see him play that much at Columbia. You know what I'm saying? I've, I've seen him once or twice, but I don't. I can't say that he would control the game at all. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, yeah, these these dudes are definitely game changers, man. I know because I coach just, you know, he's he's definitely one of my favorites, bro. Um, your name has come up, came, your name probably came up out of the three or the four people I interviewed as one of the top three. You mm-hmm. know? Um, you got like an infamous move everybody knows you for is the up fake. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, as far as like putting everything together, I know like you were, did you, first of all, did you play, did you play the point or did you play the two? I played, I played the point and the two. You know what I'm saying? When, when Carl was in, I played the two. When he wasn't in, I played the the point what Tim played. You know what I'm saying? It was really we had like three guards for the most part. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So <clears throat> I hated the point, but you know, I played because I had to, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but really Carl Carl would Carl would play the point. When we when we were both in the game, he would pretty much uh, run the point. Okay. Um, now, who are the three best big men? Claude. To me, Claude would be uh, this men, right? Because if we just if you talking about Columbia, then Jazz would have to be one of the best. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't know how many. <laughs> it probably wasn't the many big men at Columbia that could. We can make left hand layups. <laughs> you know well, Claude was left handed, wasn't he? That's what I mean. But nah, I don't know how he did with his right hand. But but Claude was tough. Yeah, no, yeah. the women is a separate separate conversation. Honestly, I don't even really know how too many men even compare to them because then you start talking about TOCs and dominance. Nah, I'm talk- like, nah, I'm not. I'm not talking about none. Of it. I'm just talking about like straight up as a as a big. Body, Jazz like, was a big man. I thought she was like a. I thought she was a nah, three. No, she. Nah, Jazz was like they they power forward. Oh yeah, okay. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, you know, Jazz. Well, Claude would be a one to me. Um, Maurice Hunter would be another big man that he should have went a lot further than he did. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And um. Paul Carter. Paul, he, Paul, um, Paul was just too nice. Like, if he had a mean streak, I think he would have lit people up. But Paul was just too nice. Claude was, like, the aggressor on that team. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Paul was, like, he played this role. You know what I'm saying? He could jump, he could jump his ass off. But I don't even remember seeing Paul dunk on anybody. And he was tough. I think he was just too nice. He was like a cool cat. You know what I'm saying? But um, yeah. but Claude, but Claude was like probably one of the best big men I've seen. All right. Um, now I was, I'm going to ask you a question. I want you to fill in the blank. All right. So first question I'm going to ask is, or the first sentence I'm going to state is, the best player that Keith Harvey ever played against in a game at Columbia was. Hmm. Probably. Uh, maybe uh, Kaka from East Orange. Or... You guys beat East Orange? <laughs> nah. 
Now nah, we ain't be. And and honestly, I think them cats like I don't see like them jokers was probably like cause Kaka like four years older than me. You know what I'm saying? So I don't even know like how <laughs> like these jokers, man. Like I don't know if you remember. Like I don't know if you ever heard, but um, Weak Weight, and that was my man that played for Weak Weight, Cat Walter. That joint made the paper because he was like 21 or something. Oh yeah, 22. I think I heard about. That. <laughs> yeah, we played weak way, and he up there, he had like 25 on us. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? But they wanted to have a 450 game, but and he was tough. But Kaka from East Orange was probably one. Mufi played for um for weak way. He was tough, and I don't know how he was there my junior year. And um and uh the two the two cats from Seton Hall Prep, man, them two guards that was in the backcourt. <clears throat> <clears throat> I think one with the Buffalo and one with somewhere. Those I, I forget their name. But my senior year, Brandon played too. Brandon like played freshman. Yeah. I think he might have been a freshman or a sophomore, but but Brandon played um for Seahawks Hall Prep too. And he was tough. <clears throat> okay. Um the funniest thing I've ever seen happen to a teammate is <laughs> <laughs> um damn there's so many man uh <laughs> <laughs> I even want to say that one oh, <laughs> the audience wants nah. to hear you my brother Nah, I ain't gonna say that one. That's my man. Um, well, the, the funniest thing I saw, well, one of the funniest things I saw was um, one man was about to beat Bailey up in the middle of the game. Beat Bailey up in the middle of the game? The coach? Yep. Who was it? My man, Stu. <clears throat> Stu, I never heard that. Man, Stu, man, Steve, like, like. Oh, okay, Steve, right. Man, Steve. Yeah, man, like, like, that's why I said, like, I don't know what was going on with, with Bailey, man, because honestly, Steve could have been, like, one of the best cats, like, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. He was, he was a, a big guard. He had mad handle. He could shoot with both hands. He could pass and all that, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I don't know what was going on, but Bailey wasn't putting him in the game, man. And um, and that cat was, he got up like right off the bench, and he's he approached Belly. He's about to knock him out, man. Did Belly put him in the game? <laughs> nah, that was it. Like he he wound up uh, leaving leaving, but he was about to hit him. Yeah, it gets emotional. Up there. And the funny thing was is what the funniest part was, you know how Belly pushed up his glasses. <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of like he was surprised like he ain't really know what was going on but then he, I see him push up his glasses and stuff like <laughs> <laughs> yeah I was dying that's crazy I was I was hot because you know that's like that's my man but that was funny when I saw him I couldn't help myself when I saw Billy push his glasses up Okay, but that was um, that was funny. Like I ain't gonna say the other thing because that's my man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the best dunk I've ever seen when I was playing for Columbia was uh, Mufi from Weekway. We, we was playing weak way at home, and then um, they was out of they had an out of bounds play, and you just hear somebody um, uh, I don't know if it was his pops or somebody just said Mufi like hammer time or something. So that joke, <laughs> like, yeah, they just they just do the ball up, and that joke just just cranked it, like shook the whole gym. Was it on somebody? All. 
other nine people that was <laughs> on the court. Like, <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. All right. One crossover that comes to mind when I played for Columbia is Well, uh, I, I snatched on somebody um of uh, when I played Union. And the joke almost slid on, under the um under the score stable. <laughs> you remember who that was? No, I don't remember who the dude was. But um I don't remember who the dude was, but it was like right past half court and I snatched it and the dude slid. <laughs> Did you guys beat Union? Nah, we lost to them too, man. Like Union was a, a pain in the neck. I think Matter of fact, I think my junior year we might have lost the union in the um states or something. Cause I remember they had this tall cat. Fiftieth uh, time in Columbia history. Huh? I said for the fiftieth time in Columbia. What is it about Union that Columbia just can't beat them? When it, the Jamil and them even lost to them. Yo, but honestly, our issue was rebounding. Like the tallest cat or not, Maurice was lazy. You know what I'm saying? Like if Maurice really, he didn't care about, he didn't care about basketball. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like if he really, what, he was probably a sophomore my senior year, I think. <clears throat> and he was nice enough to like really start and put in work. You know what I'm saying? But Maurice ain't really care. And then, um, and Kosi was like our center and, and Steve Witherspoon. <clears throat> but um, we really didn't have have big men like that. Like and Kosi, like six one, and freaking the teams we playing, they got like six five cats. You know what I'm saying? Like multiple. Like seeing Hall, like I think Tony L was playing with seeing Hall at that time. You know what I'm saying? So they had like all these big men. So it was more like rebounding for us, like because we would be in a lot of our games because we scrambled. Like our guard play was all right. But it was just like boards and stuff. And and that cat from Union, he was like six five, six six. I think his last name was like Skeet or something. Darius Skeet or something like that. <clears throat> yeah, what do you think it is about now when we were coaching, I mean I kinda well when we were coaching, right, I would say that we kinda maybe we did reach our potential. Um, we had three, you know, we say what four years. We had three top twenty teams, right? Um, we upset some teams, lost three times in the county semifinals. Yeah. <clears throat> Do you think like I know back in the day, especially? Can you compare that time to what uh, what was different? Like, do you think? Like, you know, back in the day, it was kind of like Columbia always, always, no matter what it was, they always underachieved. It was like a damn curse. And when we were there, we beat the prep twice. Do you think, can you compare what it was like when you were coaching there to when you were to when you were playing or from what you've seen in the past having the Columbia teams? Yeah, I think, um, I think over the years, I think, even though, like, the administration might not have took basketball as serious, you know what I'm saying? But, like, the coaches, I think they took it more serious. I think because I don't remember even being able to shoot around after practice, you know what I'm saying, when I was there. You know what I'm saying? Like, we had to get on up out of there. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So, um. <clears throat> And I think it, and even if it was available, the play, the players on the team probably ain't take it that serious to want to stay. Want to do it, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So um, I think once that happened, like my years, it was all about the girls' teams anyway. You know what I'm saying? They had the whole the whole school to themselves. They could go there whatever they wanted. You know what I'm saying? And um, I just think. Even these kids, they started seeing uh, – I think it started getting to Columbia like basketball is a way out. Like, you know, where I came from, like basketball was the way out to us. When I got to Columbia, like basketball was kind of like extracurricular. Like, you know what I'm saying? 
it wasn't really about they really they they want a team to get their letter or whatever you know what I'm saying but it wasn't really like they was trying to really make no noise because jokers was doing whatever they wanted to do after like I mean yeah I see that too you know um Desmond also said that and so did you know Rodney but when you look at a team like Seal Hall Prep you know they don't necessarily have players that are starving, looking for it as a way out in life, you know, but they do have that mental toughness that Columbia didn't have sometimes. No, but they're bred, they're, they're bred to play basketball, little cats. Like, you go in there to play basketball. You know what I'm saying? People was at Columbia and tried out for the team. But, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Them jokers go to Seton Hall to play basketball. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's true, most definitely. But um, but I I mean, in the coaching is the coaching is different, bro. Like, like I would hear other people tell me stuff like on the sidelines about like how people are coaching me. You know what I'm saying during the games. Like I ain't really pay no attention to that until I got to college and like like once my college coach like had those talks with me and was telling me about like trying to utilize me the best way. I was like, damn, I wish I had this uh, green light when I was, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <clears throat> Cause I was probably the best shooter on our team, but I didn't care about scoring. You know what I'm saying? I was more like, all right, y'all want me to pass the ball down low? I'll pass the ball down low. Mind you, the people down low was like six one. It's <laughs> too, but you know. So I mean, yeah, you know. So it's kind of like that same thing with Columbia over and over again. You know, we came there, we tried to break it, but it's pretty much the same thing. You know, you get like a team, you get a program that doesn't really care too much about basketball. Like if you see the difference with the women or with the girls team, you have Miss Wright. They pretty much run South Orange Middle. You know That's what I mean? That's what I'm saying, bro. Like, we was getting kicked out. We were playing Seton Hall Prep. And this is one of the arguments I had with the athletic director that probably, you know, caused to him trying to get rid of me. But um, the guy schedules – we get the uh, – what were they called again? The flag team or something like that? The color? Yeah, that, that joint. He's about to play the team prep in the counties for his semifinals, and we're getting kicked out of the gym for the, the color guard or whatever the hell they were. I don't even know what the name of the team is, but how is that possible, bro? That's not how. And then we got to, and us as coaches, right, we got to compete. That's why I think what we did was so good. It was like, it's crazy because we got to compete with Eastside. We got to compete with Seton Hall Prep. These are teams that we beat, you know, um, mm -hmm. play St. Anthony's, bro. How the hell – we play St. Anthony's, we play St. Hall Prep, and we can't even get time in the gym in the summer. We can't get time. How are we going to compete with these teams? We just show up in November, and you don't want to give us a proper uh, practice time while we're there. Yo, bro, and that's and that's the thing, like, and that's what's all – I feel always been wrong with Columbia, bro. And that's why, like, I never – like, I wasn't really beat on even coming back, even after I left, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because, like, politics, you know what I'm saying? And, like, you start seeing the influence that parents have over the programs, you know what I'm saying? And then the messed up part is these cats be feeding into it. You know what I'm saying? Like, you feed into it and you got – Parents telling your kid, telling their kids not to take a charge and stuff like that. Like that's ridiculous. Like, like how you going to tell them to do that and, and and think they're going to go to the next level? Like you really think you saving them for the next level? Like hell no. 